Hi, I'm Andrew with Baker's Gas, and we're here today with the all-new Miller Matic 142. So, in this video today, we're going to go over some simple setup, what the machine comes with, the features on this new newer machine, and uh, how it compares to the older 141. So, uh, and we're actually going to do a little bit of welding with it too. So, let's just dive right in. So, all new to the market here is the is the 142. Going to replace the 141. Um, it's kind of a different design, a little bit slimmer, um, slimmer or narrower the long ways, but taller, uh, different handle designs, um, a little bit more rugged looking, and then we got a digital interface similar to the old 141, and we got auto set, our menu, and our power switch up here. But as all you guys know, the 141 to 142, this is the 142, it is 110, so I got it plugged into a 110 volt extension cord. Um, so it'll do 19 volts max, and um, recommend like 360 inches a minute. It'll do higher than that, um, but it is a uh, you know a, a basic machine for the homeowner or hobbyist that wants to get a little into the MIG welding market and uh, it's priced competitively in that market so you guys can, the barrier entry is pretty pretty low, um, but you're still getting a quality machine made by Miller. So what I got straight up, strewn out on the table here is um, some of the items that it comes with. So come with a MIG gun, 030 contact tip, 030 wire, come with our gas hose, I'm going to show you guys how to plug all this in, set it up. Comes with a um, gauge for sizing your material, pretty handy to have. And then also comes with a T-handle Allen wrench, that's for changing your polarity out, so when you're going to run self-shielded flux core, we can flip-flop polarity. I just wanted to show that off. And then I got an accessory that it does not come with is the Spoolmate 100. So this 144 or 142 will run the Spoolmate 100, um, and there is auto set features for that, and you can run 030 or 035 aluminum wire through the Spoolmate 100. I just wanted to set that off the side, show everybody that yes, this is spool gun capable. So if you got a little project for aluminum and you you know you want to buy a 142. Um, it's always nice to add that on because it will run that unit. So let's turn this thing on here. Now we got plug it in. So you'll notice very bright red in the Mac 142. It's going to give you our voltage input. And then I was like, just had it on auto set there. So um, auto set does 024 and 030. So there is no 035 setting for auto set. The machine will run 035. Um, we just got to turn auto set off and go into a manual mode, then you can manually adjust it yourself to run 035 wire. But today we're gonna to run 030 wire. Um, and we're gonna use auto set just to give it a good run and see where the settings lie. Um, in our menu tab there, so this is the user menu, we can toggle through. So we got a run in, which is auto, um, and we can turn it off. And auto run in is where it's that first initial creep of the wire as you're, before you start welding. Pre and post, so that's our gas flow, pre flow, and maybe we'll give it a 0.2 second. Post flow, we probably don't, won't worry about that, but that's just giving our, our gas um, pre and post flow. So motor calibration, um, we can, that, that we'll dive into that here on the order manual, but that's gonna calibrate how the wire is uh, tying, so that's more for a service center there. Uh, factory reset, we can just factory reset this if you've got some settings in there that um, aren't working out or something got jumbled in there. We use that in our service centers too. Um, then what else we got? We got SW reverse. So let's go back inline voltage and we'll toggle out of that. So pretty nice. Um, newer look on the whole machine itself. Let's dive into the side panel here. So we have our power block, our drive roll, and then all of our, our idler wheel, our tensioner. Uh, this clamps down on the MIG gun. I'll show you that here in a second. We've got our ground cable. There was some minor, had to put that together. And I'll just grab this real quick. So on this unit, we had to take and run this over top and put that, tighten that all down. The ground clamp came detached, but the cable was inside. Um, so this will hold a, an 11 pound spool or a one or two pound spool. And then obviously you can run the aluminum spool gun, but that spool's up in the spool gun. So gives you a nice uh, chart up here, some with, with recommended settings. 
uh, what gas to use and if you're not using gas or if you're going to run stainless. But it just gives you some voltage and wire feed speed. For different material thicknesses all the way up to 3 16 so this machine's good up to 3 16 um, And it's a very simple machine. So I guess in, in, in the world of the uh, 142, where do you decide? Like where would this fit into you? you if you're looking at a 142 or a 211 or a 215, I guess it would depend on material thickness and if you want to go up to 220 volt. So this unit's a 110 only. Um, so I guess when you're deciding what welder to choose, look at what power input you're going to put to it and material thickness. So it's only rated up to 3 16 um, Can you weld heavier? Yes. Is it, is it recommended? No, but it will do it. Um, but you're just not going to put enough heat into that material to properly weld that. So the 142 is limited on material thickness. So just keep that in mind when you're looking at all these welders and, and, and when to jump up to the 211 or the 215. Um, so let's dive in here. We'll plug this MIG gun in. I'll show you how that works. So what you want to do before we'll move this is when you go to get that in there, I like to feed this up first. And it should feed right in there. You can see it's right there. And then pull that back, loosen this, open that, and then push that MIG gun all the way in until you feel it pretty much stop. And then I tighten that up and drop that back down, get it out of our way. The only reason I fed that first is because getting it in there afterwards is, is pretty hard. It'll go, but it just the way you gotta route it doesn't work. Then it plugs in right there to the MIG gun. And that's where it, we got our MIG gun installed. So let's throw that spool of wire in there. And then to change the drive roll, it's got that quick change drive roll. There's one drive roll wheel. So we are on 024. We'll toggle it over. Now we're on 030, 035. We'll take off our um, we gotta take off our nut here. Let's show a little bit here. So we put that smaller spool on there. This is set up for an 11 pound spool. We just got a little two pound spool. Pull that out. Now what you can see here is a it's got a lock up. All that's gonna come out. You have that that's gonna come off. And then we're gonna see how this is ran. So basically you're gonna run it. Just like that. And now that goes on there. And then we're going to do washer, spring, and then nut. So the spring goes in between the washer and the nut, and that's going to drive our tension on our spool. So pretty pretty easy to get that off there. Um, I just used a little pocket crescent. If you can use anything, socket set or anything like that to change that out. Uh, but keep this. I always stick it in the side there because people lose that after they take it off. And, set that up. Um, but we'll get that wire run here in a second. What I wanted to show you guys too is the gas line. So pretty simple setup on the gas. We got our input in the back here. It's got a little cap on there. We're going to pull that out. And so this goes right here. And then this has a just a short piece of hose, probably four or five feet. And uh, it's got a little hose clamp right there. And then it's got, you got a little barb nipple on the regulator that this came, this came with the 141. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna just slide that on. If we can get it on there. It's gonna go up there. And then take a pair of pliers. I got a pair of whelpers here. And this thing just should move. right up to the end of that. And so that's gonna give our clamping piece on that nipple so we don't get any leaks. We're good to go there. We're gonna get, we're gonna get the wire installed now. We'll turn our gas on here in just a second. Um, so what I like to do too, is when we're running the wire through the system, we'll open our wire up here, is I like to take the nozzle and the contact tip out, and I'll or take it off, I should say. And I'll tell you what, so when I ran a lot of these um, units, change a lot of wire, and, and what happens is if you don't pull that out or pull the contact tip out, and I'm not saying you can't, you, you 
can you get you can get lucky a couple of times, right? But if you don't pull the the tip out, I'll show you what I'm talking about here. Is we'll pull the nozzle off. We'll pull that tip out. So if you don't pull that off, what happens is when you're feeding that wire, it's gonna sometimes it comes in there and it's just running through that liner, hits the back of that, and it burden nests at the drive roll. So take those two pieces off so you can clearly see you got an open hole now. So now we're gonna run the wire through. It's pretty simple. We just that little spool comes undone. Pop this out. If we can get it out of there. I got that in there good. Cut that end off. So I like to feed the wire through as much as I can through the MIG gun. And then I'll close my tensioner. We'll just check it. We're at three right now. That should be fine. I put it back in manual mode. We'll increase our wire feed just a little bit here. And then I'll pull the trigger. And what it's doing, jogging that wire. So it goes into a jog mode. You saw that the wire. There we go. So now that the wire is through all the way, so it goes, if it doesn't recognize any arc, it goes into an automatic jog mode. So then I put my contact tip on. If we can get my contact tip on. Let me cut that in. I got a little jumbled up there. Um, so I like to feed everything and then tighten that contact tip. I always do finger tight on those. Um, you put a wrench on that, the next thing you know, you can't get it back off when you got to change it. And then I put my nozzle on. Perfect. Then we're ready to weld here. So let's give this little guy a shot. Um, before we I wanted to show you too, I got my gauge. I got a little piece of metal here. We'll see if we can't, what size this is. Uh, it's not eight. Uh, probably considered eight. It's uh, it don't fit in 14 gauge, so we're gonna call it eighth inch. Um, so we're gonna give that a shot and call it eighth inch. We'll set up our auto set to eighth inch on uh, 030. And we'll give it a whirl uh, here. Let me turn that on. Go through O. And we'll drop it down an eighth inch. And then it should be set us all up for primers. So let me get my welding gear on and we'll give it a try. So I got my setup here on auto set O3O eighth inch material. Set that on here. Um, got my wire clipped. Let's give this a shot here. Got my ground cable on. That's how I weld. Very crisp short arc for, and we're only on 110. That's that's pretty impressive. Nice little machine. Uh, built up a little bit. I was going a little bit slow, but it's not bad. It welds really pretty nice. It's got a nice, real crisp arc. I I like that. That's it's impressive for just being a 110 unit, and uh, you know we're running 030 wire, an eighth inch material. So any, it's got to be pretty good, you know, for any anybody in their shops and uh, auto body stuff. These little machines are perfect for all that stuff, you know, putting in little panels and uh, just bike work, um, anything like that. I believe these are perfect for that situation. But where they lack is if you have 220 power and you want to use 220 power, then you want to step up to a bigger machine. But for entry level, and you can put a spool gun on it and do some aluminum work, it's awesome. So if you got any questions, comments, please leave them down below. We'll do our best to answer them. Stay tuned for more, and thanks again for watching. Thank you.